we're almost done, but I do get, I got one more story. And for some reason, all my stories involve the anus. <laughs> <laughs> some strange. <laughs> there's, a, there's a theme. <laughs> Actually, you know what happened? The reason why it is is uh, I looked up that first prostate story, and then it's like people who like this <laughs> story like this, yeah. also like this. <laughs> so this they one know me well. <laughs> this one apparently happened back in 2018. Woman charged after bursting plastic explosives in husband's rectum. And I I've seen this in a movie and read it in a book. Did he come? <laughs> yeah, I saw this. Uh, have you guys ever watched? Uh, I think it's called Man on Fire with Denzel, Denzel Washington. Denzel, yeah, that's a really good movie, by the way. You should watch it. They also stole many points from a certain book. <laughs> anyway, I don't know what book they stole from, but that movie is really good. And yeah, there's a part where he does that too. Again, it's weird because up. I don't remember the How's book he... or the author, but it was a horror book about I want to say like vampires. But like, I noticed a lot of plot points. That were similar. A horror book about vampires? Yeah. And what stole them? A What's Man that? on Fire? And, and the, that movie Man on Fire. It's like there were certain plot points. Like, well, I, did they steal anything besides the, the explosives? I know the they asshole? did because I was like, I was watching and I was like, some of this feels kind of familiar. And I was thinking of the book and then like it got to the like the uh, explosive uh, anal charge. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I can get on board with this. <laughs> that story, though, it's supposed to be, I, I mean... I want to say Brian Lumley. Okay, but, but how do you get it up there? <laughs> well, it, it doesn't show that part, but, <laughs> like, the guy was, like, knocked out or whatever, and then it just shows him, he comes to, and, like, Denzel's like, oh, I, I shoved these explosives up your ass. You oh. might want to tell me the information I need or whatever, you know. Um, but that, that movie is supposedly like based on a true story. I don't know like if that really happened or right. how much how much bullshit they put in there. Yeah, but they, they slapped that on some pretty uh, random shit. Basically, yeah. basically, the movie's about this like girl that gets kidnapped in like Mexico or somewhere, and then Denzel's tasked with like tracking her down. But like, it's a really good movie. I haven't watched it in a long time. I should watch it again. But yeah, it's really good. Um, so an Iowa City woman, 43, has been charged with homicide after a, a pitiless crime concerning her 49-year-old husband, who she had recently learned had been having an affair with a much younger woman. The now ex-wife, who is being held in custody, is believed to have procured plastic ex explosives via an online dark web retailer that just accepts payment with cryptocurrency. Okay, okay. According to detectives, uh, she made the buy after finding out her husband was cheating. The woman was enraged to find out her husband had been having an affair for several years with a 24-year-old woman he'd met through an online sugar daddy dating website, said police. A search of her computer reveals she purchased a small quantity of plastic explosives from a site on the dark web. We believe that she drugged her husband with sleeping pills to sedate him so she could put her plan into action. It is said that the woman inserted the plastic explosives into the wreck. Uh, rectum of her dormant husband prior to setting them off with a remote. Investigators unearthed a webcam in the debris, which they presume she used to uh, witness her husband explode. The husband instantly died in the explosion, which was so loud a neighbor in an adjacent house called 911, leading investigators to the messy scene. The widow's name is being uh, squelched until the man's next of kin has been notified. Yeah. <sighs> Well, at least it's fast for you. Uh, the cleanup crew, you don't feel a little bit bad for them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the people that are, like have to um, clean crime scenes, like that's a bad job anyway. Yeah. But to go in there and just see like feces and blood like yeah. plastered uh, uh, on all four walls of the probably ceiling and that floor and yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Can she still own that house in prison? Like, can she still, like, manage it and be like, yeah, that's my house. I own the property for, like, however long she's in there, probably the rest of her life. I mean, I don't know how that works because, like, she would have to somehow keep the property taxes paid or the government could seize it. Hmm. Just wondering, like, uh, how is she going to manage that if she does? <laughs> like, she seems like she's from an affluent, you know family like her husband was a sugar daddy but i mean she probably got life in prison so like what does that house matter to her yeah you're right i just i don't know just to lose everything just because you well because you killed somebody but you know i assume the house would just like go to the next of kin or whatever mm. probably yeah, I, but I, I don't actually know how that works like what happens to your property when you go to prison mm. 
think that's the best thing for the banks, right? They can repossess all these criminals' houses. <laughs> Probably. But damn, man. She blew his ass up just for cheating. <laughs> I don't think the punishment fit the crime there. People, yeah, I mean, it happens a lot, though. Like, you know, people, a lot of times people hire hitmen, you know, when they find situations like that. And, uh, you know, some strange shit, man. I don't know. Yep. I mean, <laughs> there's some vengeful people when uh, cheating comes into play, I think. I'm so used to, like, just being like, oh, okay, bye, I'll never see you yeah, again. Yeah, both, both people just walk away. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel bad. Yeah. You know, I've always wondered, like, if if less people got married, like, let's say these two weren't married, do you think she would have been as, like, up in arms about it? She might have been, but sometimes I feel like marriage puts a pressure on people that even, like, like increases, like, their psycho coticness when like something happens to where they can tell things are going to end maybe yeah i don't know yeah like they're desperately clinging to it or something yeah yeah i think that does happen and then people do get pretty wild they're they're too afraid of things ending and how they're going to leave their life alone or something like that i sometimes wonder if like as a society if we wouldn't be better off if like marriage was just like stop being a, a legal thing people did and just like people if they got married it was just like kind of a ceremonial thing and they said they were married but they were not really married and could you know break up at any time you know yeah i mean that's i think men like that idea women i they don't seem like uh they they seem like there's a little bit more of a, a rescue net for them, like, you know, safety net for them. Because, like, when it comes to marriage, when it comes to having kids, like, there's a lot of laws that look out for them. It makes sense, too, but some of it's kind of, like, a little too extreme, I'd say. Yeah, it kind of depends on the society. Yeah. Well, I, I was reading about, like, some native society where, like, they be together, and, like, if the woman would break up, she'd just leave the guy's stuff on the doorstep, and th- that was the end. Yeah. Everybody just went, went home and lived, kept living their life. <laughs> Yeah, that's the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you get tired of each other after a while. That's normal. I get tired of friends. <laughs> yeah. You ever see somebody like every day for a month and you're like, all right, uh, we need to take a break. Yeah. <laughs> we need some space. <laughs> yeah. Man, the other thing is like, especially with like really religious people, I feel like marriage just traps so many people in terrible relationships and they won't give it up because because they don't want to piss off God or whatever. Yeah, you know. like certain uh, certain moral standards. Which, I mean, if you, if you think back to the time where they were formed, where like if you catch an STD, like yeah, there's a good chance you're gonna die. Then a lot of those rules kind of make sense, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, times change. I mean, my mom knows a woman that um, attempted suicide once because like. She was religious, and she was married to this guy that was abusive towards her. And, like, she wanted out of the marriage, but, like, all the, like, church people were like, no, no, you can't get divorced, you know. And and eventually she just tried to end it all. And it's like, you know, it's pretty fucked up that people buy into that shit to such a degree that, like, they're like, oh, if if I can't get out that way, I'll get out this way, you know. It's so fucked up. 